All right, Algebra 1, Lesson 49, talking about writing equations in slope-intercept form. Uh, because we do have different forms of linear equations, we have uh, standard form. Um, so the slope-intercept form of a linear equation can be used to graph lines quickly. Um, it's handy because it gives us information about the different characteristics of the graph that we want to draw. For instance, you know, from right to left, the very first thing that we want to put uh, on our graph is the y-intercept. It gives me that first point that I can actually graph, and then from there, it tells me about the slope, right? That, that m number tells me how far up or down I'm going to go and how far to the right I'm going to go, right? And from there, I can go, you know, continue to draw point after point after point and then connect those points, right? Slope-intercept form is really handy. Um, if you're unfamiliar with it, the slope-intercept form of an equation is seen right here as y equals mx plus b, where the value of m is my slope, okay? And the value of b is where it crosses the y-axis at, or the y-intercept, okay? So m is the slope. It's not x, okay? Just the m is my slope. Does that make sense? Hopefully, a little bit. All right. So the solution of an equation in two variables is an ordered pair, okay? An xy coordinate, okay? An ordered pair is going to look like this, okay? With an x value and a y value, okay? Or set of ordered pairs that satisfies the equation. We can have more than one ordered pair that's going to satisfy it. Uh, solutions of equations in two variables can be represented in a table of values or as a graph on a coordinate plane. For instance, we can plug in, uh, let's take our graphing calculator here for a second um, and show you how we can get a table of values uh, on something. Okay, so uh, s let's see. Um, slope intercept form of, e of an equation. Y equals, somebody give me a slope. Any kind of slope. 2x minus 5. So, so 2 is your slope, and negative 5 is your y-intercept, right? Right. So if we graphed it, we would see this line right here. Right. We can see that it's crossing at negative 5. It's going up 2 over 5, right? Oh, wait, wait, wait. What did you say the slope was? 2? Yeah. It was just 2, so it's going up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Okay? Uh, but I could also, besides representing that, I could hit second and then the graph button, and it would give me a table of values. And all of these coordinates, these xy coordinate pairs, are solutions or points that are on that line. Does that make sense? So we can represent um, the solutions to a linear equation either as a graph, where all points that are on the line are solutions, or we can represent it as a table of values. Okay. All right, finally, when working with real-world application of linear equations, the, what we want to do is we want to correctly identify all the values. We want to know what is being, uh, in a real-world question, what is my y-intercept? Because it's a variable, right? Um, and the way that we do that is we understand uh, all the things that y is, right? Okay, so we have y values, okay, if we look at... Can anybody tell me what else we would call the y values? What's another name for the y values? Think about on a table. What a, you know, we've found a lot of things, but we call them different things. Um, you said the y-intercept. No, not really. What if I talked about domain and range? Which one of those is the y values? Domain or range? Range, okay, so range. Range is my set of y values. What if I talked about input and output? Which one of those is my y values, the input or the output? Output, okay, it's what I get out of it. Okay, um, in terms of those variables, right, we could talk about independent and dependent variables. Is y an independent or a dependent variable? 
this is the one that really helps us understand how I heard I heard an independent. Does anybody say dependent? No, everybody says it's independent. All right, well, let's look at how the equation actually works. It says y equals mx plus b, right? Okay. Um, remember what, um, well, actually, let me come back to it. Y equals mx plus b. Let's go ahead and put in a value, uh, value for b. Let's say 5, right? Let's put in a value, value for m, like uh, 2. So we had the equation y equals 2x plus 5. What I put in for y, y is dependent, yes. Right. Y depends upon what I put in for x, because x is the input. So the output is a dependent. Okay, so the reason I bring this up is because if I look at a word problem and I'm trying to figure out which of one of them is the y value, I'm looking at which one of the variables in the question is dependent upon which, uh, on which other variable. For instance, let's talk about age, uh, age as a variable and let's say height as a variable. Okay, age and height are two variables in a graph that we want to draw. Which one of those two variables is dependent? Height or age? Height. Height is dependent upon what? On how old? As you get older, what typically happens? You typically get taller up to a point. So I'm not saying it's, in, it's an infinite linear graph, but to a degree, up until, let's say, your 20s, right, you continue to get taller as you get older. It might be by small amounts, and some people finish earlier than others, and some people, you know, grow for a lot longer, okay? But typically, your height is dependent upon your age, right? It's especially applicable to, let's say, little kids, right? Every little bit older they get, they get way taller. Okay, it doesn't work the other way around, right? Oh, you got an inch taller. You've aged three years, right? Doesn't work that way. You don't get more birthdays because you grew taller, right? Uh, your age is not dependent upon how tall you are. Some people, if your age was dependent upon your height, you would be, you know, you'd already be 19 years old, right? Because you're taller than or as tall. Some of you would still be 12, right? because you're just not that tall, right? So one is dependent upon the other. And that becomes important when we look at real world problems as being able to determine what the dependent versus the independent variable is. So these things are important to understand. Our x values, okay, are our domain, our input, and our independent variable. And it's amazing to me in math how one thing can be four things, okay? But if you understand that one thing is also these other things, it kind of helps you understand how those things work in different environments, okay? Does that help, hopefully, a little bit? Okay. All right, let's look at a couple questions here. All right, we want to look at this. Uh, we have a graph. We want to be able to write the equation of the line in slope-intercept form. Y equals mx plus b. And I'm so happy I came back from uh, Thanksgiving break, and now my board works again, and I can draw on this stuff. Um, what's the first thing we always want to identify on a graph if we're trying to write the equation? The y-intercept. What is the y-intercept here? Negative 1. All right, so I can put that right there. And... Fortunate, unfortunate, all of them have a y-intercept of negative 1. So no, but none of the other answers got tripped up with that. What do I want to do from the y-intercept? Somebody besides Tiffany. See where it lines up. See where it lines up. Um, do you mean like where it crosses another coordinate at? Like the next coordinate pair? Where is the next coordinate pair at? 
three one. So right here. Okay. So we found the next coordinate position. What do I want to do from there, Christian? Well, like down here. Okay, so I found that, but I haven't been able to add any information to my equation yet. Can I add any? How can I add any information to my equation? Let's start from the y-intercept and go to that first point. All right? What is left in my equation to find? The x value. Um, I mean, yeah, kind of not really. I mean, remember that. Like, let's say you look down here. The x and y stay just part. Of what am I actually trying to find? Not trying to find x or y. I'm trying to find what's left in here. I saw for b. I don't need x or y. What am I left to find? M. What is m? What does m represent? You can go back in your notes, probably a couple of slides. I think that, that stuff's been sent to you. Probably slide one is going to tell you what m represents. Get kind of stiff. The slope. All right. Slope is. Can anybody in this class tell me what slope is? What is it, Blayton? Rise over run. Okay. So rise first. So we're looking from this point to this point. How much does it rise? Rise is 2. Okay. So 2. Got our x there. How much does it run? 3. Okay. Is it going up into the right or is it going down into the right? So is it positive or negative? Positive. So my equation is y equals 2 thirds x minus 1. Does that make sense? All right. Just as important to our class, you know, are the people who understand the question and can real quick give me an answer, are the situations where sometimes we're not quite sure. Okay? Those are those to me are better learning experiences. Okay, so don't ever feel, you know, embarrassed. Hey, I didn't know what was going on quite, you know, I wasn't sure what we were looking for. Um, all right, so here we have an equation that's in standard form. We want to write the equation in slope-intercept form, and then we want to identify what number represents my slope and what number represents my y-intercept. So Christian's answer, I think Blayton's answer, Tiffany's answer, I want somebody else. All right, we've got negative 4x plus 3y equals negative 2. What was the slope-intercept form of the equation again? y equals mx plus b. All right, what... What does that equation solve for? What does it equal? Kind of, but there's one thing that's left alone on, on one side of the equation all by itself. What's left alone on the equation all by itself? Y. So anytime I have a linear equation in a different form, all I need to do is solve for Y. Okay? So we have the equation negative 4x plus 3y equals negative 2. I want to solve for y, which means I want to isolate just the variable y. So everything else has to move to the other side. Okay? Uh, let's see. So who wants to go first? Tell me what to move first. No. Because I, I, don't, I, don't, I want y on the left, right? If I subtract 3y to the right, now I've got 3y to the right. And it's not to say that I, that I can't do that. I can. Um, but there's really no need to move it. Right? Let's move something else. Jeremy? Add 4x to both sides. Okay? So I get 3y equals 4x minus 2. Now, could I have written negative 2x, or sorry, negative 2 plus 4x? Yeah, but would it have been in slope-intercept form? No. So I want to put it, keep it in form with that y equals mx plus b. What's the only thing that needs to move now? 3. How do I move 3? Divide by 3 on both sides. Now, what do I divide by 3 on the other side? Which part of it do I divide by 3? The, okay, so I divide the x by 3. 
just just that you divide both of them by three okay so he wasn't wrong it just wasn't all the way right so y equals four thirds x minus two thirds okay does this seem pretty easy so far now next part of the question what is the slope what part of this equation down here is the slope? Four thirds is the slope. Okay? All right, somebody besides Mia, what is the y intercept? Negative two thirds. And that's important. You have to take the sign with it. Okay? So I look through here four thirds, negative two thirds, got the slope intercept form here. C B seems to be correct, right? Okay. All right, do we feel like we kind of understand these questions okay? All right, do we want to look at something from our book before we move on? Close it down. Okay, take a look at your book's question. See if there's something in there that jumps out as, hey, I might need help with that. Going once. Blayton? One? Okay, so you don't want to do an A through G at all? You feel good with A through G? You want to do, you want to pick a different question? Does anybody, nobody has an argument to that? Okay, all right, we'll do one then. It says expand each expression by using the distributive property. Question one. Okay, so we've got X squared y cubed, 3xy, minus 5y. We want to use the distributive property. Blayton? Okay. So what do I distribute first and to what? So you're just distributing the y cubed to this and the x to all of this, right? All right. What's the coefficient or the number in front of x squared y cubed? One. So what's one times three? We'll do coefficient to coefficient. Three. Okay. What's x squared times x? X, x to the third. Good. What's y cubed times y? Y2. So I have Y to the what? Third? All right. What exponents exist above X and Y? One. All right. So what am I doing with our exponent numbers? Adding them. So 2 plus 1 was 3. What's 3 plus 1? 4. Okay, so we got that part of it, right? Is that part of distributing over with? Are we done with that part? Okay. All right, let's distribute this to this. All right. Um, so the coefficient you said out front was 1. What's negative, or sorry, what's 1 times negative 5? Negative 5. What's x squared times no x? x squared, right? There's nothing to multiply that x by, so we just bring it over. What's y cubed times y? y to the fourth. Okay, I'll check it here. Uh, that appears to be the answer. Was that a little bit easier than you were worried it would have been? Okay. All right, well... I will close it down there.